In this video lesson we're going to take a look at pivot tables. Pivot tables are a way of organizing and then summarizing large amounts of data um, to make it easier to read and to summarize. You see we've got a list of data here. There's quite a lot of information. It's really difficult to pick out the important uh, points of that. So we can combine this information into a pivot table to summarize it for us. Many of the uh, aspects we're looking at at level three involve working with a list of data. So just remember a list of data has to be continuous. The titles at the top, continuous data. One of the benefits of that is that if you click anywhere on that list of data, then when you run any of the wizards, it'll automatically pick up the full list. You don't have to click and drag to highlight it, for example. So just click anywhere on the data list and then select data menu option and then down to pivot table and pivot chart. OK, a little wizard for us to work through. The first one, uh, step one, is choosing where the data is. In this instance, we're using data that's in the Excel list. But look, you can use data from a database, from an external data source, from various different places. And then what kind of report do you want to create? We're going to create a pivot table. Um, you can create a pivot chart, which is just exactly the same information, but displayed graphically compared to numerically. So just make your choices and then click next through the wizard. The second step is to uh, determine the data that you're going to use. And as you can see, it's already picked that up for me because we've got a list because I was clicked inside the list, it's picked it up for me. If it hadn't, then we just define that list by collapsing the dialog box and selecting the data. But it's already picked it up, so we can just click on Next. The third step is to define where we want to put this report. The default is to put it on a new worksheet, but you can put it in an existing worksheet. Um, and in here, you just collapse the dialog box and choose which cell you want it to start the worksheet in. I'm going to leave it in a new worksheet though. It just gives it a little bit more room to work with. We've got two options here. We can click on finish and then uh, decide which fields we're going to use um, in our pivot table. Or we can go to layout now. I, I like to go to layout first. So I'm clicking the layout button. And it just brings up this little extra bit to the wizard that allows us to define which of the fields go where in our pivot table report. It's the field names from the actual spreadsheet that picked up at the top of the list, the column titles, if you will. So they are the columns in your list. And we just choose what needs to go where and click and drag it across. Now, what does need to go where? Well, I can't really tell you on your spreadsheet. You have to think about it. I could tell you on mine because I know what the data is, but there's no rights and wrong for this. You've got to look at your data, try to determine what it is you're trying to show. What I have here is a list of sales from that have gone to various restaurants. So what I want to do is put um, the product name as my rows. So that'll list down the product names down the left hand side of my pivot table. And then I'm going to put my customer name as a column. So that's how it's going to uh, arrange my data. Then in this data area, I want to put the quantity that they've purchased off us. So I'll click and drag. And you can see what happens there. It brings the quantity field in, but it automatically makes it a sum. So it's going to calculate the sum total of the sales for each customer for each different product. That's my basic report set up. I click on OK and then finish the wizard. So that takes us to our new worksheet. And there's a few things to show you. First of all, we get the field list that jumps up. We close that and bring it back using the second thing that I want to show you, which is the pivot table toolbar. And the last icon on there is a show field list. This shows us the fields that we used in the original data. These column titles. 
So I've got a little bit of screen space here, so I'm just going to close that down for now. And there we can see underneath our pivot table, which summarizes the data. Um, so for each customer, it shows us how many of each product they bought from our company. Now this is a dynamic um, report. So if we go back to the original data, we can make modifications to this. But although it is dynamic, the report itself is not updated until you tell it to update. So you need to click on the refresh data button in order to update that data. We can do that automatically, but the default is that it doesn't. So you must um, remember if you make changes to the original data, make the changes, go back to your pivot table, and then update by clicking the refresh data. To do that automatically, we need to go into the table options feature. And table option, it's this tick box down at the bottom, which allows us to refresh the pivot tables when the document is opened. Depending on where your data is, you also get some options of refreshing every so many minutes. Let's say if it's linked to a database. The only option we've got available here is to refresh it when the document is opened. So you generally want to make sure that was ticked. There are two ways to modify our pivot table in terms of the, the fields that we're using for the columns and the data area and the rows. The first way is to select our field list, which brings up a list of the fields. And then we can either click and drag. For example, I've got a field here, the sales rep. We can click and drag that. You can see how my cursor changes to the various areas of the pivot table that we might like it to be. That can be a little bit fiddly. So the second way is to select the field and then say add it to a particular area. So if I add the sales rep to the column area, for example, we can click to add to and it put the sales rep there. Gives you uh, a bigger breakdown of the data, but it doesn't always make sense. You've got to be very careful if I just undo that. You've got to be very careful where you put things. Sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to try and put the sales rep uh, with the product name, and you can see that looks quite good because that allows us to see that Chaplin's Bertha sold 72 crab mates, Fred sold 99 crab mates. But putting that same field and I can click and drag it from here as well, up with the customers, it just it doesn't quite work. So just be careful where you're putting things. As I said, there's no rights and wrongs. It's just about looking at the data. To remove a field totally, we can click and drag back onto the field list. The second way of working with modification with the fields and, um, is to rerun the, the wizard. And we can get that from the Pivot Table Toolbar, and then we go down to Pivot Table Wizard, which allows us to go back into this third step of the wizard. Then we can go back through it and make changes to the data source, for example. But we can also then go back to the layout step, which allows us to move all these fails around. For example, let's put the sales rep as the page area, and then OK. And we'll finish that. Just close those down. Be able to see what we've got there. See, I've got the sales rep up in this page area that I did say I'll come back to. What that allows us to do is choose certain sales reps. And it filters this data 